From this to this, London's constantly changing building landscape. This video is about the Millennium Footbridge, also known as the Wobbly Bridge. Over the River Thames, London, England, joining St Paul's with Tate Modern. This video highlights the changes from before the bridge was built and provides some history of the structure and changes nearby. It's fascinating. Please stay until the end to see all the detail. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. The Millennium Bridge is shown here on a map and joins the City of London with St Paul's Cathedral on the north side of the Thames, Tate Modern, the Globe at South Bank in Southwark on the south side. It was an exciting time just before the Millennium with lots of ambitious building projects going on across the country. In London, amongst other things, there was the Millennium Footbridge, at which the first real physical sign was the piers going up, which we see here. This is at the same time as the old Bankside power station was being converted into what was then to be called the Tate Gallery of Modern Art, as we can see from the sign. As an aside, I will be doing a couple of other videos on Tate Modern in the future, so please look out for them. The Millennium Bridge was a revolutionary design meant to represent a blade of light. It is a suspension bridge, but done differently. This is the Albert Bridge, built in 1873, further down the Thames towards Chelsea, and it looks more like a conventional suspension bridge, although it is actually a hybrid. But it does demonstrate how a suspension bridge would normally work, with the suspension coming downwards from the towers. It also had a wobble, but we'll come back to that later. A normal suspension bridge was not possible at this site as the towers would obscure the views of St Paul's Cathedral, which need to be kept uninterrupted. This is why the suspension is effectively on the side. It is called lateral suspension. The views of St Paul's Cathedral need to remain uninterrupted to comply with a policy known as St Paul's Height, which amazingly has been in operation since 1937 and protects not only the views of St Paul's but also other historic buildings as well. The bridge is supported on both banks of the Thames, where the suspension cables terminate, as seen here on the north side, and sits on two piers in the river. The design of the piers was driven by the need for them to be able to withstand a ship hitting them, and also to minimise its impact on the flow of the river. The foundations for these piers actually went down 18 metres below the riverbed. The piers were constructed by building a coffer dam, as seen here in the 2000 photo, to allow access to the Thames riverbed. The piers are made of concrete and steel. Once the piers are in place, the coffer dam was removed. I wondered at the time what the orange bits were on the top of the piers. I now believe they were the base of the equipment that was actually used to install the suspension bridge cables. The Millennium Footbridge opens on the Millennium, the year 2000, the same year as Tate Modern, but unlike Tate Modern, closed after just two days due to a wobble. It reopened again in February 2002 after a refit and is designed for 5,000 people to use the bridge at any one time. The bridge has been a massive success, allowing workers and tourists in the city a quick route over to Tate Modern. After it opened, it was easily possible in a lunch break or after work to go and have a quick look at some art or to speedily get to the Globe Theatre and the other attractions on the South Bank. Some statistics. The bridge is 325 metres or 1,066 foot long with a footplate width of 4 metres, 13 foot. As we can also see from this photo, the bridge is very well aligned with the cathedral, giving an excellent view of St Paul's when walking north across the bridge. On this bright January day, you can get more of an idea of the blade of light the designers were trying to achieve, with the bright morning sun reflecting off part of the bridge. The bridge itself was designed to look impressive. The competition to design the bridge was won by an artist, Sir Anthony Caro, working with engineers Arab Group and architects Foster and Partners. 
Construction started in 1998 and it opened for the first time in June 2000. The pictures of the construction I have taken were in January 2000, which actually shows how quickly the structure was put together. Its iconic design has led to its use in many TV shows and films, probably the most famous being Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, where the bridge is actually destroyed. And back to the wobble. The changes to stop the bridge from wobbling blend in really well with the original design. Essentially, lots of dampers were added. 52 tuned mass dampers and 37 fluid ones were added, which we can see if we look carefully. The bridge wobbled due to a phenomenon known as synchronous lateral excitation. This has been experienced in London before on the Albert Bridge. It was actually once known as the Trembling Lady. There is a sign on the bridge dating back to the 19th century that says all troops must break step when marching over this bridge. My understanding is that when people walk and feel a slight wobble, they tend to get in step with the people around them, which then magnifies the issue. Get sufficient people together walking in time and a wobble occurs. Moving on from the wobble, the bridge is always open, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I filmed this at 7am on a January morning as the city was slowly waking up. It was a great time to experience the bridge and get some wonderful views of the city and the bridge as the sun came up. It is worth noting the building on the right as we walk towards St Paul's. The building did not look that old in 2000, but it's being rebuilt in 2023. It's called One Millennium Bridge. Interestingly, in a trend more common the old building has not been completely demolished, but stripped back to its core, retaining 69% according to the billboard of the previous building. And this then forms the basis of the new building. This is a lot greener as it saves on concrete and steel, though it does impose limits on the new building. Next to this building, between it and the Millennium Bridge, there was a short inclined lift known as the Millennium Inclinator. It has now gone and I understand will be replaced by a platform lift when the development is complete. When filming, I wondered what this glass tower was. Well, I found out it's actually called the Millennium Measure. It's a triangular glass obelisk, which was presented by the Worshipful Company of Scientific Instrument Makers to the City of London in commemoration of the Millennium. There is multiple meaning with the initials MM, as well as standing for Millennium Measure, also standing for Millimeter, a unit of measurement, and 2000 in Roman numerals, the year 2000. Then there's the question of who actually owns and maintains the Millennium Bridge. Well, it's actually owned and run by a trust, Bridge House Estates, which itself has a very interesting history that dates back to 1282, when it was initially established to maintain London Bridge. It now owns and maintains several bridges in London, as well as performing other charitable work. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, please press the like button. I'll be aiming to make more similar videos, so please subscribe to the channel, click the alerts bell, and add comments, especially with any additional information. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.